the world of the gods was about to collapse. They were fighting to the death with the evil gods from the Great Void. People, who will protect them in the future? There is a large spaceship in space, nine turns of reincarnation. The gods sacrifice their own flesh and blood, setting up the last barrier to protect humanity. By giving up their powers, they initiated a great and most dangerous divine trial. In an unknown place, a guy was sitting with a sword in his hands. Yellow-colored energy was radiating from him, turning into a large golden seal. Those lucky enough to qualify for the test are known as the heirs. The system reports, Welcome to the abode of the gods, the place of passing the test. Above the guy was a large blue eye. This time, please let them pass the test to the end and become the new gods of that world. The boy got up and slung his sword over his shoulder as he walked forward. Several more pairs of shoes appeared next to him. The inheritors will have to fight various bosses to gain the power of the divine system that suits their mission. After becoming new gods, they will join forces with the gods of the previous era and together overthrow the evil gods. Many people were standing in an unfamiliar place. Even mortals can face the might of the Great Void. A large monster with many eyes and fangs appeared above the people. And restore the triumph of the gods. And can the triumph be restored at all? The heirs, in fact, are complete assholes. What kind of power has awakened in them? True power or divine power? What else are the heirs and what is this reality? They trained day and night, fought countless fierce battles, rising to their feet again and again. And no damned gods can take that away from them. On the broken planet, there was a blonde-haired girl in a pink and purple suit, wearing a white and lilac headdress with a veil on her head. This girl's name was Zochinea, the goddess of light. Next to her was a creature with a human body, but no legs, instead of a long tail. His name was Jenshin Yinglong. He said that he never thought that they, those who had always considered them untouchable, would come to such an end. Jenshin had said that after this battle, everything would be over. Zoe asked, but would they win? A gray-haired man with a spear in his hands came out to meet them. The man in silver armor, red cloak, and missing one arm was the supreme god Odin. He said that as long as the last god didn't fall, the battle wasn't lost. One closed his eyes and said they should believe in them. At this moment, an old man on a mechanical steel bull appeared. He had blue glasses and a lot of screens in which he clicked something. This old man turned out to be the god of morality, Lao Tzu. He said that the formation of the nine great incarnations will be completed soon. This is their last chance. One got angry, and at that moment, a barrier broke over their remnant of the planet and a person's body flew down rapidly. Jenshin shouted, Yang Jin! The person who fell was a guy with long black hair tied back in a ponytail. There was a spear sticking out of his body, which had pierced right through his shoulder part. This guy's name was Yang Jin Langshan. He said he couldn't hold it back. Yang Jin's mouth was bleeding, and he said that he was here. At this moment, the black power passed through Zoe Chinea's body. Blood spurted from her mouth. Jenshin shouted, Chinea! One was furious. Black energy came out of the Chinea and left a huge hole in the girl's body. Energy called them little bugs. This energy turned out to be a giant black mouth with many fangs and red eyes. It was the son of the black nebula, Gatoya. It has many energy tentacles. Gatoya shouted, let them die. It launched its tentacles and began to strike at the team members. Lao Tzu shouted, let them hold him back. One of them got an electric shock and said that he, dirty foreign garbage, hands off the ground. Jenshin used his powers and transformed into a large divine dragon. He gathered his strength and released a stream of fire from his mouth. This stream of fire fell into the monster's mouth. This distraction allowed Odin to get closer to the monster to strike. Odin threw a purple energy punch that came from his spear. Jenshin told them to be careful, this is not the end. One asked, isn't it the end? He turned around, blood spurting out of his mouth. Katoya threw a punch at Odin and said that he was wrong. Lao Tzu shouted, alone. The monster threw Odin's body and said that this is the end of the world. Such a fate awaits all who oppose them. Lao laughed and said that the era of the decrepit gods was over. They were just pathetic creatures now. One was lying on the ground, bleeding profusely. He said it was finally done. Lao activated the nine turns of reincarnation, pressed start, and in an instant, 
His transport transformed into a huge Asian-style spaceship. He said that the old gods will fall, but new ones will take their place. Lao said that as long as the Earth exists, humanity will stand to the end, and the gods will be reborn again. Their heirs will restore the triumph of the gods. School named after the Paper Lantern Festival, this name appeared on the Lao spacecraft. Lesson 1. The Device of the Nine Turns of Reincarnation at the core of the device is the power of the sun goddess Shi. It itself is created from a special metal that is mined in the stellar reality. It has the power to control the flow of time. After the system was refined by Taiyi Zhenren, the control area began to cover the entire planet. At that moment, on the ground, on the screen of one of the houses, there was a picture of a girl in a black latex bodysuit and with rabbit ears on her head. Abode of the Gods, a life-changing game, is celebrating its 20th anniversary. Let them take great riches, fight with the strongest rivals, pass exciting quests. Let them plunge into the world of wonders and adventures with their heads. They invite you to join the abode of the gods and become the new heir to divine power. The main prize of this game, everyone who passes to the end, will be able to become a real god. They promise that they will give each player the best service and help them develop incredibly in the game. There were a lot of people standing on the street. Some of them were running. The man who ran and laughed and talked. He finally learned the spells from the moon scroll. People in white clothes ran after him and said that a level 50 berserker had been discovered, and they were making detentions and sweeps. There was a tall, bald man in a brown suit standing in the office, and he said another one was smashed to smithereens. He said that they spend years developing their abilities in the game, and then return to the real world and think that they will become kings there. The man turned around, rubbed his bald head, and said that then ban, and all that was left of them was a pile of ashes. A guy sat behind him and said that he didn't see any point in this stupid game, because players still work hard in terrible jobs. He had black hair with white streaks, a black sweatshirt, over which he was wearing a white t-shirt and black pants. His name was Jai Zyingfen. The bald man had completely turned around, and his arm was in a cast. He said that he would not say so. In the game you can dig up all sorts of items and treasures and get superpowers. Jai Zhangfang had a screwdriver in his mouth, and there were many tools around him as he repaired something. The bald man had told him that the most important thing was that it could be used in the real world. On the street, men in white caught a guy running away. One of the men said that according to the inter-territorial code of the abode of the gods, his soul was heavily polluted. He said that he needed to undergo compulsory medical treatment. A guy in a white t-shirt, blue shorts and slippers shouted, Let them let him in. He is the heir of the gods themselves, and they are committing sacrilege, heretics. Jai looked out of the window and said, Another one's attic is leaking. The bald man said that the higher the level in the game, the higher the position in society. He said that those who have no talents are excluded from the game and vegetate at the bottom having access only to the most necessary level. Jai shouted, yes, yes, and if he didn't close his mouth, those very denizens of the bottom would raise his rent. The bald man said that he was certainly talented, but he also knew that ordinary middle-aged men weren't particularly favored right now. Jai chuckled and asked, well, when would he, a talented middle-aged man, be paid for his work? The bald man laughed and said that next time, by the end of the month, he would complete the spider's nest quest and get paid for everything. He clicked on his wristband, which showed a picture with many functions. The man clicked on the pill and took it. He took a pill and shouted, Hoba. The bald man said, Thank you, man. Now he's full of energy. He'll pass the quest, get paid, and treat him to lunch. Jai started to take the box out of his bag and said, Well, yes, well, come back to this question. He will still be alive by the end of the month. The bald man said something else. He would continue to search for the person he was talking about. Jai looked at the man and remembered a picture from his childhood, where a tall and muscular man with glasses stroked his head for a while. He said thank you. Jai Zhangfang walked down the street and twirled the keys on his finger. He wondered, old Jai, old Jai, where can I find him? He went to the door and put the key in. He looked down and saw a box by the door. He said, oh, did someone send him a package? Jai started opening the box quickly and thought, did he finally win the lottery? He opened the box, took out a pendant in the shape of a large red stone, and asked what it was. 
At that moment, the window opened and the woman screamed, Idiot, did you finally come crawling? Jai was greatly startled by this unexpected noise. The woman was the landlord, Aunt Ru. She asked when was the last time he paid her rent. Aunt Ru shouted that if he came back without money in three days, he would be kicked out of the house. Jai squatted under the window and said, Yes, he can do it today. He said, Does she accept jewelry? The stone began to glow and spread streams of energy everywhere. The guy thought, What the hell? Is this thing alive? The energy tentacles of this pendant wrapped around the guy's neck like barbed wire. Aunt Ru asked, My god, what's wrong with the boy? What kind of sore did you get? Red threads of energy began to choke the guy, drooling from his mouth, and his eyes turned red. The pendant loosened its grip, after which Jai began to breathe and put his hand on the ground for support. He thought, What kind of thing is this? Almost strangled. There was a red choking mark on the boy's neck. Aunt Ru came down and asked, Zio Jai, how is he? She said don't let him scare her like that. The guy wiped his drool with his hand and said, Yes, everything is fine. It's a young case. At that moment, the woman's head came off and blood covered everything around her. A burning red monster emerged from her body, which had a skull with horns instead of a face. He said it was there. There. Found. Chapter 2. The Divine Kingdom This is a game that was released 20 years ago. It has been popular since its release and still is. It is a real space created by the power of the gods. Despite research, people still don't know much about that space, so what are they waiting for? A notification screen appeared in front of Jai. It was written, Congratulations, he became a player of the abode of the gods. Let him pass the entrance quest. The guy looked and asked, What, he became a player of the abode of the gods? He began to remember moments from his childhood when he repaired something and said that the mechanical board is only responsible for current conduction. Little Jai looked at the emerald stone and asked, How does such a small crystal perform all the other functions? A tall man from the guy's past memories came into the house. The man said, Son, he's home. He said that he pulled out a bunch of treasures from the dungeon. The boy can sort them out and play enough. The bespectacled man picked up little Jai in his arms and started circling around the room. That was the last time he saw Lao Jai. And then he disappeared without a trace. He was caught. His father was gone. Jai knew that the key to his disappearance was the game and decided to become a player. Little Jai was sitting in front of the computer when he received a notification saying that they were apologizing, but his talent hadn't been awakened yet. The game was forbidden to enter. The boy grew up and gradually got used to the idea that Lao Jai would never come back. There were a lot of restrictions on entering the game, but the guy tried to put it out of his mind. Until the moment he became a player, he didn't realize that he had always dreamed of becoming a player. A button appeared in front of Jai that said, Let the game begin. The guy clicked on it. The monster said horror and released a large stream of fire. A red-tipped arrow flew into Jai's temple and left a wound. The guy thought, wait, what's that? The monster brandished its weapons and smashed the ground. Jai thought, why is this monster so strong? He pondered, after all, the chance of passing the test is from 58% to 64%. Jai was thrown back and hit his head on the corner of a rock, blood coming out of his mouth. He thought, let them not tell him that he was destined to die in the qualifying round. This is some kind of deception. His red stone pendant lit up and began to take the shape of a sword. The guy asked what? The system reports that he has received a new weapon. Please let him choose the base attribute. The monster got ready and attacked the guy. Jiu thrust his sword forward and began to deflect the monster's energy. The system notifies you that your health level is critical and you need to choose a medicine. Jai held the sword and said, He just became a player. He won't give up. Chapter 3. Copying the Game a dungeon is the fastest way to level up, get equipment materials, and earn money in the realm of the gods. The difficulty of a dungeon is usually calculated automatically based on the level and talent of the player. There are multiplayer and single player dungeons. According to the gameplay, it is divided into five types. Decoding, combat, story game, challenge, and competition. Some dungeons are of the same type, while others change depending on the player's skills. Jai's hands were covered with green energy threads and green pluses appeared. He thought, what is it? Green energy threads began to encircle the guy's body, 
He thought that someone was treating him. Jai said thank you. A group of players appeared next to him, a tall knight in steel armor with a mace, a blue-haired girl in a white short dress with a staff, a red-haired guy in black sunglasses with a submachine gun, and a gray-haired girl in a green dress with large sleeves, holding a wand and a book. The guy with red hair shouted, Hurry up. The kid was seriously by the boss. They'll tear him up. Guys. Jai shouted, Wow. At this moment, the monster prepared to strike again. Players ran out to meet him. The red-haired guy aimed his submachine gun and fired energy. The knight shouted, Zio Wu, Lao Jai, use a type combat tactics. The gray-haired girl waved her magic wand and shouted, Water bullet! The blue-haired girl aimed her staff and said, Ice star! All of their attacks were directed towards the monster. Jai was surprised and thought. His eyes were deceiving him. The moment he was attacked, his flames turned into water. The monster stared at the players as water began to run down its fiery torso. The guy with red hair asked how, how is this possible? He said that water element attacks on fire spirits should do double damage. Things aren't going according to plan. The monster grew even bigger in volume and walked towards the players with a smile on its bony face. The guys rushed to run and shouted that they had miscalculated. That's not a simple fire spirit. We need to get out soon. The monster laughed and said that they had overestimated themselves. He started swinging and throwing punches at the sides where the players were running. The guy with red hair was hit in the back. Blood spurted out of his mouth and he fell. The knight also didn't have time to dodge the blow and fell at Jai's feet. Jai was sitting by a rock with a sword in his hands. He said that beating the boss with a simple attack was useless. The guy got up and said if that's the case. He ran at the monster, thrusting his sword forward. Jai said that the only thing left to do was dodge. He started throwing punches and dodging at the right moment. The guy thought that the strategy that came to his mind was not quite reliable, but he had to try. He shouted, Hey, man, all he can do is swing an axe. The monster stored energy in his palms and said that since he loved jumping like a fool, he would show him what a race with death is. He aimed the fire snakes at the guy. Jai thought his body was going numb. He dodged, and when the muzzle of one of the fire snakes was near his face, he thought that he almost didn't feel any pain, but he had to continue. The boy stood up, a bleeding wound on his shoulder. He covered one eye and grabbed his sword. Jai thought that he should hold on a little longer and wait for the moment. Drops of the boy's blood dripped onto the ground. The monster watched as the battered guy sat on the ground. He raised his huge hand up and started to create a fire vortex. Jai looked at it and thought, this is it. He stood up, planted his foot on the ground, and held out his sword. Once he read a post on the player's forum. Theory of transformation of a double attribute. Jai tried his best to hold on to his sword and stop the flow of fire. Blood spurted out of his mouth, growing larger with the effort. The boy's hands were bleeding and his clothes were burning. The theory was that if you beat off an attack at the time of the element change, even a novice would be able to kill the boss without taking damage. Jai saw that the fire was beginning to combine with the water and knew that now was the time. He deflected the attack and hit the monster's belly with a water stream. It began to glow with a bright light and exploded. There was a huge explosion and a guy was standing in the dust that rose from it. Jai said that we should thank the person who came up with this theory. He said the king of ideas. The boy lay down on the ground and let go of the sword. The system notifies that it congratulates player Jai Zhang Feng on his first victory over the giant of ice and fire, passing the entrance stage and obtaining the achievement one in a thousand. A man was standing on a rock cliff. He said that he was too quick to let him join the game, Jai Zhang Feng. Chapter 4. Counterattack In the abode of the gods, repelling an attack is a very risky and highly revered action. Using defensive weapons or melee weapons, you can accurately deflect an attack when the boss uses a critical hit. Bosses that can be defeated by repelling an attack are mechanisms. Jai opened his eyes and looked around questioningly. He thought, that's how he ended up at home. The guy thought that he had returned from the abode of the gods alive. He jumped up and looked down at his hands. At this moment, the system reported that he had passed the initial stage of his class, Giant of Ice and Flame. He will be awarded a reward. Let him wait. Jai looked at the screens that flashed in front of him. He received one fire armor, 
two fire spirit stones, two water spirit stones, and 5,000 experience points for a single boss kill. Jai held his hand to his head and pressed the button, get. He said that the reward dropped a lot. No wonder that boss almost killed him. The system says, please, let him choose a specialty. In the world of the gods, there are seven types of specialty. Each of them corresponds to a certain legacy power, which will increase until the player reaches level 50. Jai found himself on a lake of some sort, where there were giant blue trees with purple foliage. The system says, please, let them confirm the specialty with one of them. Jai looked ahead and thought, I wonder what he will get. The boy walked forward through the water. He came to the first tree, the reaper tree. Master and master of death and reincarnation. Can summon the undead of darkness. Resistance to the element of darkness is 100%. Jai walked over to the second tree, the divine warrior tree. They have great health and power, passive state, berserk. The guy walked up to the third tree, the tea master tree. They are mages of the elements, have the power of earth and nature, have seven strong natural attributes and three training methods that help in the development of talent. The fourth tree is the sowers. They have power over chaos and blessing. The player gains a unique attribute that allows them to spread destruction or blessing, as well as better group attack skills. Fifth tree, these are the messengers. They have the power to control disasters and bestow blessings. Players have the ability to spread calamities and blessings while having the widest attack range. Jai scratched his head and said, They're all so cool. He doesn't even know what to choose. The sixth tree, these are the managers. They have the power of wisdom and knowledge. They are used to develop the best tactics for completing the game, gaining hidden knowledge and quests. The seventh tree was the soul singer. It has the power to manipulate desires. It has a powerful spiritual energy that can control the enemy's spirit. Jai said, well, that was the end of all his knowledge of the game. He asked if it was a way of killing time by thinking about something. A yellow funnel formed above the guy's head and a scroll fell from there. The scroll opened and showed two choices, open or close. Jai pressed open and the whole place lit up with yellow light. The system congratulates and notifies that he has received a unique specialty of the S-Class, an original character. A huge golden tree with golden foliage appeared in front of him. The system notifies that he has an unknown attribute. No skills, no element attribute. Level 3, 100% divine power inheritance ability, 100% specialty skill training level, 100% elemental tolerance, and source skill, divine inheritance. Jai asked, an original character, is there such a specialty at all? He slumped down and pressed both hands to his heart. The guy said it hurts. It feels like something is boiling inside. He fell, and when he woke up, he was back at the golden tree. Jai jumped up and thought, what is this? Where is he? He looked around and asked, at the next stage of choosing a specialty? Yellow waves appeared above the boy's head, forming an eye. The eye said that he had obtained their legacy. Let him become a pawn of heaven and protect his mortal world. Jai stood knee-deep in the water and asked, He got their legacy. Who are they? The eye turned red, lightning flashed in it, and it released a large stream of energy into the guy's stomach. Jai shouted so loudly that blood came out of his eyes. The eye took back its shape and said, Let him remember. This is his last chance. Jai sat on the floor of his room and held his head. He pulled his hand back a little, looked at it, and asked what kind of horror it was. The guy got up and kept his balance and said that this is definitely not the process of choosing a specialty. Jai sat down on the chair in front of the computer and thought, how did this abode of the gods come about in the first place? He picked up a computer mouse and wondered if it was connected to real gods. On the computer screen, it said, official forum of the abode of the gods. Zaya looked away to the side and thought, that I thinks this is beyond his cognitive capabilities. Jai spent a long time at the computer. It was already dark outside the window, and his eyes were like two black coals. He screamed, but he couldn't find anything, not a single word. The guy leaned back in his chair and crossed one leg over the other. He said, Calm Jai Zhangfeng. Jai said that he needed to remember every detail of how he got into the game in the first place. He recalled and reflected that he felt something move into him. Then the game menu opened, and he got a weapon. The guy said, is this all about the coupon? 
He stood up and shouted, That's right, that package. Jai gripped the iron beverage can and tossed it to the side. He left the house and went to the trash can. The guy started digging around and said, Ugh, stink. He found the box, pulled it out, and said there must be something in it. Aunt Rue appeared behind the guy. She walked up to the guy and asked, Zio Jai, did he forget something there? The guy shouted sharply, Lao Jai. The woman was startled and asked, Zio Jai, is he off the rails again? Jai put something in his pocket and said, No, Aunt Rue, he's fine. He laughed nervously and asked, How is she? The guy ran forward waving his arms. While at home, Jai unfolded a small piece of paper that said, This is my gift to him, son. He wondered what Lao Jai was implying. The system asks that they are looking for a team to explore the dungeons. Would he like to join? Jai accepted the offer and thought, since he couldn't find any information there, he would continue searching in the game. The system notifies, Welcome to the quest multiplayer for beginners. Day, Night Wanderer of Dungeons. Chapter 5, Choosing a Profession. In-game professions are based on seven-dimensional power types. Players will be assigned different game professions depending on their innate talents, and they will inherit skill types. Reapers, Divine Warriors, Tea Masters, Sowers, Messengers, Soul Singer. Jai looked and thought, this is the dungeon of the abode of the gods. In front of him was a view of a building with many floors and large columns. Robed men were climbing the stairs. Jai stood at the railing and looked down. He turned to see a girl with brown hair and a curvy figure, a guy standing by a pillar, and another guy doing something on his screen. A boy in a yellow t-shirt ran out to them and shouted that it was his first time in a dungeon raid. How bright it was, and such fluffy clouds, a great view. He shouted that this dungeon was so beautiful. The brown-haired girl bit her lip and stuck out her finger. She said, Oh, there are so many people out there. I wish someone would take care of a weak girl. A guy jumped up behind her, raised his hand, and shouted, Sis, he can. The bespectacled guy who was carefully studying something on his screen asked, Have they seen the description? He said that you can die in this dungeon. The system reports the conditions for passing the dungeon. Ten rabbits ran around the field, seven died, and three remained. Three rabbits ran away. The sun was gone. The system kept saying that the twilight bird came down, stole the rabbit. The black rabbit would come to them, sew up their mouth with threads. Jai asked what birds, what rabbits. He said he didn't understand anything. The girl stood next to the guy and said that using riddles as conditions is a common practice. It seems that this dungeon will not be easy. She said unlucky, so unlucky. They newbies should have gotten simple quests. The brown-haired girl closed her eyes a little and said, Pretty boy, let her last longer. Jai remained silent in response to her advances. He thought, if the rules are encrypted in the puzzle, it's unlikely that the boss will be weak there. The guy thought that you need to prepare and be alert to adapt to the situation. He opened his screen and asked, Well, what's on the internet? The system shows the player's stats. Jai Zhang Feng Level 3, by origin, local. The attribute is unknown, and special skills are in the process of being acquired. Ability points are at the second level, but there is no element attribute. His skills are copying divine power. Get copied skills every 10 levels. The original character is a force that controls order and chaos. This is a specialty created by a special talent of the player, which does not have certain characteristics, but is learned with the help of skills. It has a variety of directions and can be transformed into any specialty. Access to the elements, 100%. Jai thought that copying divine power could give him any skill that famous gods had. He asked if you only need to touch God to unlock it. Is that his special talent as an original character? The guy smiled and thought, Wow, if he gets to a god like Taishang Leijun, eh, it's scary to even think about it. The system reports that Jai has new equipment. The system asks, Open it now. There were two answers to choose from, open or later, in nine seconds. At this moment, the guy was looking at his luggage. He decided to combine the fire armor, the fire spirit stone, and the water spirit stone. Jai thought, it turns out that only the water stone is combined with the fire armor. Okay, he will try. He clicked on the merge button, and it was completed successfully. From the available supplies, he obtained the water flame armor. 
This isn't a class item, a special reward for killing an entry-level boss. The effect of this armor is plus 10 to physical defense, magic power, protection from water element attacks, and protection from fire element attacks. Jai was overjoyed and thought, wow, so you need to combine incompatible elements. He thought that if he collected the items to the maximum, the armor would be impenetrable. The system reports that a weapon called the Great Tower has been obtained. Its class and effect are unknown. Jai looked at it and thought that the sword must have been called Jukyu. He decided to check his pendant, but the system notifies that it is an unidentified object. Jai thought, yeah, there's no pendant in the system, so where does it come from? He remembered the image of his father and thought, and what kind of father is this who throws such problems to his beloved son? A guy with white hair and a red suit came out to the players. He looked at them and thought, fat boy, wench, the spectacled boy, handsome boy, and cheap guy. This guy in the red suit was the heir to the Jingbei company. He's a level 9 fire elemental mage named Chu Yu. He looked at the players and thought that they were low-level assholes. It's time to pick a pawn. Chu Yu walked up to Jai and said, Hey, runt, there's no way to survive without a team. He looked at him and said, Instead of becoming cannon fodder, the path will join him. Chu said that he was the heir to the Jingbei company, so he would pay well. Jai didn't say anything at first. But then he turned around and waved his hand and said, No, man, let him find someone else. Chu Yun asked in displeasure, Did you dare to refuse him? He began to accumulate purple energy in his palm and brought it to Jai's head. Jai placed a block with his sword and said, Hey, hitting your own targets is forbidden in dungeon raids. He asked what he was up to. The guy with glasses shouted, If the players don't cooperate, it will harm the entire team. The boy in the yellow t-shirt said, that's right. He actually read a lot of forums and knows the camp pretty well too. Chu Yun thought, Come, come. Let them continue to be angry. Let them gather in groups. You pathetic, uncomprehending pigs. He circled Jai on the other side and prepared to attack. But a guy with long white hair and a silver suit intercepted the blow. Chu thought, What a speed. He asked who he was, why he was clowning. Jai shouted, Thank you, pretty boy. Chu Yun said, with the pawns, he knows the rules of that dungeon. Everything is just beginning. Tishayu walked over to the fence, raised his hand to shield his face from the sun, and thought, where is the boss? He looked up at the sky, moving his hand slightly away, and thought, ah, I see. The boy in the yellow t-shirt wiped the sweat from his forehead and asked why it was getting hotter. The guy with glasses asked how much longer to wait for the boss. He said he was tired of it. Another guy with short hair bent over and said he was thirsty. Jai thought, the game has already started. A guy with short hair waved his hand and asked if it was a bug. He said it was infuriating, he said. At that moment, his body started to get covered in fire. First his arms, then his legs, and then he was all on fire. A boy in a yellow t-shirt shouted, What is this? A girl with white hair, a large red hat and a red dress that showed off her waist appeared in front of the players. In her hands was a red-tipped staff, and on her arm was a large bracelet in the shape of a sun. This girl was the sun goddess, the dungeon boss. She laughed and said that there was no need to be in such a hurry. The sun goddess put her long finger to her lips and said, Hush. The system reports that the sun goddess has appeared. The quest task is to live until sunset. The girl spread her hands in different directions, gradually creating streams of fire, and said that the hunt for rabbits has begun. Jai looked at the girl and thought, What happened? Did the dungeon master attack them? He mused that she had even burned down those who were in the top 50 rookies. The sun goddess laughed and asked, Well, who will be next? The players got into battle postures and prepared to repel the attack. The knight in armor shouted, Attack! Don't let her strike! Another player said, Hurry up, element mages! Let them hit with ranged attacks. They said that you need to interrupt her rhythm. Otherwise, they will all burn. There were shouts everywhere. Magicians for four hours. Let them cast lightning. Those in positions six and eight hours. Let them help. The guy with the brown sword shouted. They will freeze her and then strike her down with lightning. The staff in the girl's hands was called the Pilgrim of the Sun. The goddess swung them and asked, What are they doing? She said, Let them enjoy the sun's warmth to the fullest. There was an explosion and the robed guy shouted, 
There's no way it's that strong. He turned around and saw the Sun Pilgrim. The guy looked at it questioningly. A loud, drawn-out shout rang out, and the players turned to see the Sun Pilgrim touching some of the players. The goddess pointed her finger and said that the targets were chosen. The chosen lucky ones would become ashes. The guy who was standing next to Jai turned into a fiery figure. Jai thought, kills from a distance? He thought there was no escaping it. The sun goddess laughed and said they were little monkeys because she had warned them. A guy stood in front of Jai and said, one punch. He swung and delivered the sun slayer's decisive blow. Jai thought, oh, it's that silent beauty. A guy with long white hair asked, what is it? Does the sun pilgrim have an invulnerability ability? Jai looked at the guy and thought, invulnerability and invisible attacks. What kind of newbie dungeon is this? The goddess asked, did he want to interrupt her attack? She said it wouldn't work. The girl said that from now on, every half hour, ten, no, even more, stupid monkeys will burn in the fire of the sun. Chu Yun thought, huh? So this is a dungeon, a trap for novice idiots who are looking for buttock adventures. He thought, let them give up, the pigs. Jai thought that he only had one trump card, and that was copying divine power, but it needed to be timed accurately. He reflected that if they let this pilgrim continue to kill like this, only a few people would live to see the sunset, and then it would be simply impossible to defeat her. The knight held his head and asked why. Their attacks didn't work. The guy in the yellow t-shirt fell down and asked how they were supposed to fight at all. He said that he only wanted a level dungeon. The guy with glasses was asking if they should just rely on luck and hope they don't die next. The sun goddess said it was time to hunt. The knight ran to the side and shouted that he didn't want to die. He asked how to get out, how to get out of the game. The girl with the brown hair said, it's terrible, she doesn't want to be a gambler. The guy with the white hair said, calmly, to defeat the dungeon master, you need to. Jai interrupted him and asked, you need to follow the rules, right? The goddess said he was smart. She pointed at it and said that it was the one she would choose. The sun pilgrim was close to Jai's face, but he dodged it. Jai said, wow, so he'll be the exception to the rule. The sun goddess said, what an interesting monkey. Jai ran forward, and the people who were left behind began to burn. They were shouting, asshole, why did he bring her there? Jai thought, where will she hit? He ran, turned, and thought, strange, she should have attacked him by now. He wondered why she wasn't moving. The players shouted, Ah, the Sun Pilgrim is going there. Jai jumped over the player and asked, Where did she go? He ran ahead and thought they were playing cat and mouse. The guy stopped and thought, Cat and mouse, hide and seek. He remembered what the rabbits on the board meant. The goddess asked, Oh, why is he frozen? She said he was a cute, silly monkey. The goddess directed the flow at the guy. The system reports that the water flame armor is activated. Protection from fire magic attacks plus 10%. Jai thought, thank the eggs, the equipment saved him, otherwise he would have been burned alive. The goddess started to dissolve and shouted, that boy, Jai shouted, shadows, the dungeon master is moving and attacking from the shadows. He held up a finger and said that he understood the rules of the game. Chu Yun asked, rules, then he turned to Tishayu and said, hey, scoundrel, let him explain himself. Chu said this pilgrim was following him. He asked, So why was everything on fire and he was still intact? The players glared at Jai angrily and clenched their fists. Jai said, But he also said that he solved a riddle from the rules of the game, the love toe. He said the rabbits were the players, and the ten little rabbits were all of them. The kid said the little rabbits were playing catch up, and the sun pilgrim was chasing them. He spread out his hands and said that seven people had died and there were only three left. So if they didn't understand the rules of the dungeon, then 70% of all the players in the dungeon would be dead by sunset. Then they would be in danger by nightfall. Chu Yun shouted, No, it's just his own guesses. He pointed his finger at the guy and said that the bottom line was that even strong players died from the attack. And he, a pitiful third level, was still alive. The boy in the yellow t-shirt said that it sounds logical, but there may be a catch in the game. The brown-haired girl looked at him and said, yes, but he really did survive. A guy in a blue shirt was sitting on the floor. He shouted, everyone disperse. Half an hour has already passed. She is now attacking. 
The boy in the yellow t-shirt put his hand over his mouth and told the brown-haired girl that he decided to be close to that tough guy. He might be a jerk, but he was safe with him. The players yelled, Oh great sage Laozi, may he grant them his protection. Jai was addressed by a guy with long white hair. He said, Hey, man, he believes his words. The guy asked, But how do they catch the boss hiding in the shadows now? Jai put his hand behind his head and held his neck and said, Well, the long-haired guy looked up questioningly. Jai said that to do this, he must use his trump card. He warmed up, climbed over the railing, and said he'd be quick. The guy threw himself at the goddess and thought that that ability was now his. The goddess didn't understand what was happening. The boy in the yellow t-shirt pointed at Jai and asked if he was completely out of his mind. He said it would burn. Other players replied that it was all over. The end of the kid. The system reports that Jai has touched the sun god's eye. The copy effect of the divine skill is triggered. He will receive one random skill from the sun god's eye. Jai held onto the goddess, laughing and looking at his screen where the notification appeared. The system notifies that he has received the divine skill shadow immersion. The eyes of the sun goddess lit up with a yellow light. She laughed and said, Little brother, how impatient he is. Let him stay for a while. Play with his older sister. She pushed the guy away from her and said, Bye, bye. Jai landed on the floor where all the players were and landed while leaning on the floor. The guy with the long white hair thought, Is Shadow diving his skill? It occurred to him that none of the other majors had such a thing. Chu Yun opened his mouth slightly in surprise and thought that Shadow diving was a skill of the dungeon master. The boy in the yellow t-shirt said, Wow, that's cool. The brown-haired girl was surprised and asked if he was telling the truth then. Jai saw the goddess and thought, Gone. He shouted to the players that the Sun Pilgrim was about to attack. If they wanted to stay alive, they had to stand in the light. The guy said you can't let their shadow disappear. Jai looked at the sun and thought, Oh no, the sun is already setting. The long-haired guy turned to Jai. He said, Boy, let him use shadow immersion, find her, and inform him. The brown-haired girl shouted that the dungeon master was invulnerable. They couldn't kill her. The guy with the long white hair said that no one can be invulnerable forever. She's defenseless when she's not attacking. He took the sword in his hands and said, And the moment her attack starts, that's what it takes. Jai applied shadow immersion and saw the sun goddess. The goddess said, Weak humans. They use her own rules against her. She swung her staff and shouted that she would burn them all. Jai returned halfway out of the shadows and said to the guy with the long hair, Hey boss, six hours away from him a distance of one and a half meters. The goddess directed her fire stream at the night, and he screamed. A guy with white hair was running in the right direction, turned around and saw that someone had burned up and left a fiery figure behind. A fire appeared on the shoulder of the brown-haired girl and started spreading all over her body. She was crying and shouting, Save me. Jai got angry and shouted that he said to stand in the sun. He kicked the girl in the cheek and asked her why she was crying in the corner. The girl fell and clutched her cheek. She started crying loudly. Jai started running away and said he was going to sing to her. The goddess shouted, You little brat! Jai turned around and saw a stream of fire coming towards him. He shouted. She was following him again. The guy began to run away from this attack with all his might and said, One, two, three. At this moment, the white-haired guy pointed his sword. This guy's name was Zhu Guan, and his level is nine. He's a saint by profession, and his special skill is shackles. Jai ran up to him and Ju used his skill. The sun goddess was shackled and thought, How so? Shackles, this is a saint's skill above the tenth level. She looked and thought, but these two failed. The girl smiled, broke the chains that bound her, and shouted that they were too low. She said they couldn't break through her defenses. After saying that, Jai swung his sword and slashed at the goddess. Zhu Guan said that this dungeon is also low level. Jai said that although the difficulty of a dungeon depends on the skill and level of its owner, the players are selected accordingly. The sun goddess released a stream of fire from her mouth and shouted, Silence! There was an explosion and the goddess disappeared. All that was left of it was a small light on the floor. Everyone looked at it thoughtfully. Jai said that the sun goddess isn't around right now. Zhu asked if he knew where she was. Jai thought that he had gained quite an interesting skill. 
but it was unlikely that he would be able to use it to move in the shadows unless the timing was right and he got out. He speculated that otherwise, this skill would be an interdimensional imba. The guy looked in the direction of the players and thought, he knows. All the players grabbed their weapons. The boy in the yellow t-shirt asked, what if he gets burned? The brown-haired girl said they were like cannon fodder. Without that kid, they would have died long ago. Jai activated shadow immersion and saw the sun goddess running to the side. He peeked out of the shadows a bit and shouted, Four o'clock! Jai thought that he should be more careful. She might still kill them. Players were able to hit her. Jai thought, it works. He shouted, Sixteen o'clock! The guy shouted, at seven o'clock. After nine o'clock and twenty-four o'clock, the players clearly dealt damage to the goddess, and she screamed, Pathetic little people. The short-haired guy clenched his fist and shouted, Come on, guys. The other guy shouted, Juhu, keep it up. The sun goddess screamed, How dare the stupid monkeys joke with God. They will all die. She turned her fire on the people. The players were shouting, their hands, face, clothes. Shu said no, they were playing too aggressively, and she was about to go into berserk mode. Jai told them to pick up their snot and look at the sky. He said the sun would set before she could attack. The guy shouted, they will finish her off with one blow. The sun goddess said she would destroy their cute faces. Zhu shouted, go. Jai thought, hurry up. Zhu shackled the goddess with his energy chains, while Jai walked towards her and stabbed her with his sword. A shout rang out, and Jai thought he was almost there. Zhu Yun became worried and said, no, she mustn't die. Otherwise, the second phase will start, and even he won't be able to protect himself. He thought that, moreover, if they could hold on, the level in the dungeon would definitely be much higher than him. Chu grabbed the brown-haired girl's head and pushed her away. The girl flew past Jai and hit the sun goddess. The goddess swung her staff and killed the girl, blood splattering everywhere. She said thank you. Chu thought, you're welcome. The goddess waved her staff again, and the girl's body split into two. The system notifies that the first stage of the quest has been completed. It tells you that night is coming and all players get 30 minutes of extra time. The boy in the yellow t-shirt shouted that they wanted too much. He pointed his finger at Chu Yun and shouted that he was doing whatever he wanted just because he had a high rank. Chu Yun said, that's right, he does whatever he wants. At that moment, Jai swung his fist and slammed it into Chu's face. He said he was a prick, he was really conceited. Chu Yun's nose was covered in blood. Chu stood up and shouted, Idiot, let him think he's already dead. He started accumulating purple energy and shouted that he was going to kill him. Chu approached them and put the tip of his sword against Chu's neck. He said, even though he's level 9, he can't ignore him. Chu thought that the guy's sword skills were too good, and this guy had obtained a divine skill. He turned around, clenched his fist and said, Let him forget, he didn't give a damn about them. Chu put his hand to his head and thought that they would still die in the next round, and the victory would go to him. He was walking away from the guys, to which Jai said, You idiot. Chu said that if he was really angry, he'd better think of another way to teach him a lesson. Jai asked which one. Chu said a complaint. He added that game masters are very strict about ensuring that no one breaks the rules. Jai smiled and said that he couldn't believe he was such a smartass. The system notifies that a system alarm is occurring, with 3 minutes and 36 seconds left until the next stage starts. Zhu gave the guy two pills and said, Let him eat it. It will restore his strength. A new boss will appear soon. Jai said good and quickly popped the pills into his mouth. The boy's body was covered in green threads of healing. Jai shouted, Cool stuff. He asked where he got it. Zhu said that he would show him the place sometime. The floor where the players were standing began to fill with black fiber. The players were shouting that he was coming again. There was nothing to see. The boy in the yellow t-shirt asked who has the light skill. He said, let them use it. Zhu asked, Jai Zhang Feng, is he still there? Jai replied that it was right next to him. He took out a red stone from his pocket and showed it to Ji Yu. Zhu thought, it's incredible. Such a cool thing has fallen into his hands. He thought it was a fire spirit stone. But for some reason, it was a third-level stone. He was thinking that he should let Uncle Kuyi deal with it when he got back. The dungeon became very cold, and the players began to freeze. A man with a blindfold over one eye said it was getting colder. 
The guy who was standing next to him in only a t-shirt said that it wasn't just cold. It was already chilling to the bone. He said he was shaking even when he was talking. Chu Yun thought that it was just as everyone said. Before the god of night descended, people would feel his power. The guy in the straw hat said, It's cold. It's cold. She can't do this anymore. A girl in a gray suit was sitting on the floor and saying, Oh no, the temperature has dropped to zero. Next to them was a guy whose eyes and mouth were covered with ice. He barely said who has extra clothes. Let them lend it to him. Jai stood to the side with Ju and held a red stone in his hands. He said that fortunately, this thing can generate some heat. Ju said, let it stop. That's not what it's designed for. The frozen players saw this and shouted, let them see. There's a light source there. They shouted, hurry, we need to go there. Chu Yun asked, hey, where are they going? To the light source. He ignited a purple flame in his hand. Chu Yun, this is a level 9 player. His class is an elemental mage. His special skill is purple flame. Chu asked, isn't it easier to make fire with your hands? The players shouted that it was a rare skill of a fire element mage, purple flame of rank C. It had a small rollback and a long duration of action. They said, please let the fire keep them warm. They won't freeze to death with it. Chu Yun put his hand to the face of one of the players and directed a stream of fire. The guy caught fire. Chu said it was time to change the rules. He pointed his finger at Jai and Ju and said that he would give light and heat from the fire to whoever killed them. Jai asked, Can I get him in now? Ju said nothing. The players started to get indignant. The guy with the black glasses asked, Do they really have to kill them? The boy in the yellow t-shirt said that if it wasn't for them, they would have died at the hands of the Pilgrim of the Sun. The tall knight replied that it was a curse. If only he was an elemental mage. The guy in the straw hat said how cold it was. Fire. Let them give him some fire. He froze, fell and crashed. The players screamed, What a horror! Did it crash? They said it was very cold, and they were still standing there just because they were dressed a little warmer than he was. The knight took out his sword and shouted, Let's kill them. If they continue to stand like this, they will simply die of cold. Chu Yun created a purple flame in his hand and said, Exactly. If both of them were killed, he would let him pass this round safely. He reflected that temporary cooperation was nothing in the face of life and death. The knight swung at you and said, Let him forgive him, but it's more important for him to pass this round alive than to think about anything else. Zhu grabbed it at that moment. Jai threw a punch, causing the players to be thrown back into the distance. The players screamed. Jai grinned and said, He said it, you idiots. Don't let yourself be fooled. The knight asked what he meant. Jai said that people lie, but the results don't. He said that the temporary alliance was destroyed last time. The guy pointed a finger at Chu and said they all saw what he did. Jai said that a player like him was helping the boss, afraid that he would let him kill everyone first to get them out of the game. The boy in the yellow t-shirt shouted that he saw him push his sister out. He can give them fire, but if they can't beat the boss, they still won't pass. The players shouted that they needed fire now. Chu clicked his tongue and asked, Hey, are they crazy when this realm of the gods became so safe? He clenched his fist, pointed a finger at the boy in the yellow t-shirt, and asked if he wanted to warm everyone up with his speeches. Kid? Chu said they could hold out until they froze. It's simple. The choice is up to them. The players remained silent and exchanged glances with each other. A guy with long brown hair and glasses stepped out of the crowd. He said that he would help him deal with them and he would help him pass this round. Did the players ask if that guy would really help them? They said they needed fire. The boy in the yellow t-shirt said that their low-level fire element skills weren't as resistant to the cold. All the players went forward, hugging themselves in an attempt to warm up a little. The boy in the yellow t-shirt screamed and ran towards Jai and Jiju. He talked, guys, he's with them. The boy ran up to the guys and said he hoped they knew what to do. Chu said that their defense won't last long, and everyone is against them right now. Jai asked, then why are they standing there? He asked, why not just run away? They want to be targeted. Chu turned around and saw the guys running away. Chu Yun was running after them and telling them not to let them get away. The players shouted, hurry up, let them give them fire, they're freezing. Jai ran and thought that he couldn't get rid of them, but it was too dark to use the shadows. 
He saw some kind of glow and thought, snow, green? The players started pointing at the sky and asking what was going on. They were shouting to look at it, the sky. A huge man with a moon-shaped pendant around his neck appeared in the sky. The man said he thinks they guys don't understand, they're all going to die. The players found themselves in a desolate frozen space. Jai said, it's not funny anymore. The boy in the yellow t-shirt, Jai and Ju stood in a circle, back to back. Jai said that in this weather, they would all freeze to death in half an hour. The boy in the yellow t-shirt asked why don't they go there and apologize to him. Zhu and Jai looked at him with red eyes and said nothing. The boy turned pale and said, Okay, okay, he's just joking. Chu Yun lit a fire on his palm. A guy with black glasses who was standing behind asked what? Why wasn't he cold in this snowfall? The knight replied, Nonsense. Now they are not afraid of it. Because they have a fire, it's good that they went for it. Chu Yun said, He said they would pass if they followed him. He thought that means he understood correctly that the god of night only attacks with cold. This round can only be completed if they have fire. Chu Yun pointed at the guy and said that all that remained was to get rid of those three. Jai caught the snow with his hand and thought, Does the snow not melt? He wondered what that meant. The guy pulled himself together and threw a punch at the boy in the yellow t-shirt. He said, Chubby, look out! Jai asked, What's the point of aiming at him instead of the boss? Chu Yun held up a huge stream of purple energy and said, Don't misunderstand, but when a rock gets in his way, he throws it away. Jai looked at the flakes of snow flying by the energy stream and thought, Wait, it's not snow. He realized it was dust. A large green and clawed hand appeared from above. Jai shouted, Let him stop. Don't set fire to it. It's not snowing. A huge man was looking down at their actions. At this moment, the entire area was lit up with a bright light due to Chu Yun's fire. All the players scattered in different directions. The guy with the mohawk fell down and screamed, His arm, it's broken. The knight lay on the ground in a pool of blood and spoke, Cold and so hot. God said that he wasn't going to stand by and watch their childish games. Only Jai, Zhu, and the boy in the yellow t-shirt remained intact. A blue energy barrier was formed above them. Jai said, oh, the horror, almost flew up. The boy in the yellow t-shirt said admiringly that it was not for nothing that he followed them. They are reliable guys. Jai said that just like the last round, there must be some hidden conditions that they didn't notice. Zhu said he thinks they might be in a much worse situation. Players covered in blood were sitting on the ground. The guy in the blue t-shirt said he was sure he was dead and went to hell. He said that if he doesn't have a fire, you die of cold. If you start a fire, you get blown up. Jai looked at the other players and said that it was unbelievable. Step left, step right, and you're dead. He folded his arms across his chest and said, At least those assholes are behind them. Chu Yun was sitting by the stone covered in blood, his eyes bulging. He put his bloody hands on the ground and took out a pill from his jacket. Chu said that he spent another recovery pill. A knight approached him and shouted, didn't he say that they would be safe, or did he specifically want them all to die? He grabbed a sword and shouted that it was his fault. He had to pay. Because of him, he would not be able to pay for his daughter's treatment. Chu grabbed the knight's chin and said that weaklings like to complain about life, but he is so pathetic that he blames others if they can't help. The knight fell to the ground, hollows forming where his eyes should have been. Chu asked, they were lucky they didn't die from the cold, weren't they? Jai, Zhu, and the boy in the yellow t-shirt were watching them. The boy in the yellow t-shirt thought that these players gave up a lot to stay in the realm of the gods, but this time they lost to themselves. He thought that fortunately, he was conscientious and smart enough to choose the right person. Jai shouted, what a jerk, he didn't even explode, he's tough. Zhu said he was spending too much money and medicine. The players got up and started running towards Chu Yun. They shouted that it was too much. They would die anyway, so at least fight for his life. The player said that if they could kill him, they would get resources and survive. Chu lit a fire in his hand and said, Come on, he'll kill them all. Jai thought, Oh, horror, it's going to explode again. The god put out his hand and said, Well, it's no use fighting before the obvious end. He said they would have to keep each other company in the afterlife. There was another explosion, and all the players crouched down and covered their heads with their hands. Jai thought, horror. He used his water flame armor. 
the guy put his hand forward and streams of fire appeared around him. He said, so this is how to use this thing properly. The players stood behind him with tears in their eyes. They said, little brother, he's so cool, he's great. The god's eyes glowed green and he asked, fire armor, is he Jaifinj? A god with long black hair and sharp elven ears said what an interesting guy. He begged, he was treated so harshly, and he's still playing the good Samaritan? Jai asked, so what? He said that according to the rules of the game, players work together to destroy the boss. The players were saying that the boss was right. He didn't have to save them. They cried and said he was so cool. Jai thought, why are they staring at him, trying to attack him? The players bowed their heads to the guy and said, boss, they were wrong. From now on, they will follow him. They said, exactly. They would do whatever he said. Jai thought, I see. So he's a bit of a raid leader now. He turned his head and thought, so, what's next? The temperature is getting lower and lower. We need to figure something out. Jai asked, esteemed god of the night. Since he found him very interesting, can we make a bet? He thought, it looks like he likes a showdown between players. So, the god of night asked, a bet? Jai said that he would find a way to get out of there within half an hour if he didn't do anything. He said that if he loses, he can do whatever he wants. The players shouted, what is this? He decided to give up. The boy in the yellow t-shirt asked if he had frostbitten his brain as well as his buttocks. The god of night asked, Does he make a deal with the gods? An arrogant man. He poked Jai with his long fingernail and said, Well, he agrees. The players were shocked. The bald guy asked, Did he make a deal with God? He said it was unheard of. The old man in the cap asked, Did he understand everything correctly? The guy is definitely level 3. The guy with dark glasses said that he must be a seasoned gambler. The boy in the yellow t-shirt said that he was good. It's a pity that he didn't beat all the evil spirits out of that major. Zhu thought that from the very beginning, his attention was focused on the boss. He just wanted to level up and complete the round. He wondered if he was from some noble family. Jai cupped his hands, bowed, and said, Thank you very much. He said, then they start. The god of night has said as he wills. He pointed a large green rock at the boy. Jai asked, how could he go back on his words so quickly? God said that God lies from time to time. He said, does he always tell the truth? The Jai pendant released its red threads to protect the guy from the shrapnel. God shouted, is this a holy relic? He thought, no wonder a dungeon filled with low-level players has a difficulty level far beyond their capabilities. God thought that was why he was attracted to this man named Jai Zhangfeng. Jai shouted, let them scatter. A large piece of glass was flying at the guy. Zhu used divine light for protection. He shouted, let Jai create a shadow. Jai dodged a large shard and said, great job, thank you. It was a shadow passage. Jai lay at the feet of his team and thought, it's good that he has a shadow passage. Otherwise, he would have died right now. Jai asked Jiju, did he see anything? Zhu replied, no, nothing. The boy in the yellow t-shirt said if there was one thing, it was the lack of natural elements. Jai asked, natural elements? The boy replied, exactly, because the realm of the gods consists of divine power. He said that there were seven professions based on the different types of divine power that they, the elemental mages, used. The boy said that the flowers, trees, mountains, and rivers there contain the natural elements of the gods, such as water, fire, wind, and thunder. Zhu said that in other words, they were probably in a special space. He said there might be a way out at the border. A new green shard was flying at the guys. Zhu shouted, Watch out! Jai turned around and summoned his fire power and repelled the shard. The god of night said that if they didn't get serious, they wouldn't last ten minutes. Jai fell to the ground and clutched his head. He said, God, it hurts. The guy took the treatment. They asked him if he was okay. Jai stood up and said, Yes, now it's time for them to counterattack. The guy pointed and addressed the players. He said, Hey, let them head in that direction and use all the light-related skills they have. Jai shouted and let them create a path for him out of the shadows. The god of night thought he'd noticed. He readied himself and aimed his shards at the players. Jai asked, more big ice shards? He said, just the thing. Zhu shouted, hurry up, you need to shoot your skills in the air. The old man in the cap said, oh no, he can't dodge. Green energy funnels formed everywhere. 
The players were crying and shouting, Great, they're all alive, it's all their head. They were shouting, Man. Chu Yun thought, This sucker, why didn't he tell him earlier? Chai raised his sword and said that if they broke it, they would get out of there. He shouted, God of the night, he lost. God laughed and said that they were well done. They guessed it. He said that only their number is equal to the number of players. To get out, you need to destroy them all at the same time. God said that's why it's not enough for him to hold just one person, then they won't succeed. He said that otherwise, the elements would be regenerated indefinitely. God said so, but in that case, it's already dawn. Jai wondered what kind of dawn he was talking about. He looked ahead and saw the Pilgrim of the Sun appear from the cliff. She laughed and said that they had met again. The Sun Pilgrim and the Moon Pilgrim stood side by side. A girl with short white hair in a red dress and a thin man with long black hair and blue pants. The God of Night said let him see what a mess she left behind. He looked at the Pilgrim of the Sun and said, Let's quickly deal with them. He's already tired of it. The old man in the cap put his hands between his legs and said that she had appeared so suddenly that he now needed to go to the toilet. The knight said that he was such a weakling. In any case, the end is coming soon, so let him bear it. The players turned to Jai and asked, Master, what should I do? Jai looked at the energy vortexes and said that their goal was not to defeat these godlings, but to hit all the elements at once. The god of night said to prepare for the final test. Kid! It started to aim its sharp shards at the players. Next to him was the sun goddess, who was accumulating fire energy. Jai reflected the shards and said that to go further, everyone on his command must destroy one of the elements. A boy in a yellow t-shirt ran between the fragments of the god of night and shouted, let them choose their target. Be careful and do not forget about the long-range attacks of the god of night. He said that there was no need to be afraid of dodging or using defensive skills. If they had any, let them try to reduce the area of his attack. The boy jumped and shouted, Go, go, go. He was running, waving his arms, laughing and shouting that he would never hit it. A piece of glass flew into the boy's buttock and he shouted unintelligible words. Jai broke the pieces and said it would never end. The god of night directed more and more attacks and asked, What's next? And will continue to block his attacks? He said he didn't have much time. Jai and Ju saw a large white splash. The boy in the yellow t-shirt asked, Brother, do they have less than a minute left? The system reports that the countdown has started. 30 seconds. The number 30 appeared on the energy funnels. The boy in the yellow t-shirt fell to his knees and put his hands on the ground. He said, No, no, it can't be. The players clutched their heads in fright. The bald guy was on his knees, holding his head in his hands and saying, They've come all this way with such difficulty. Behind him, a tall guy with dark hair held the bridge of his nose and said that if he died this time, he would never enter the god realm again. Chu Yun thought, damn it, is he going to die in this hole? He thought that he hadn't obtained the hidden treasure yet and had lost the opportunity to respond. The Sun Pilgrim said, it looks like they will destroy everyone this time. Sorry for those two newbies. They seem to be strong. The God of Knights said that they had a chance to pass the level. It was a pity that due to internal conflict, they missed it. Chu Yun overheard their conversation, and at that moment, the system announced that there were 20 seconds left. He began to swing his fists and beat the energy vortex. Chu was screaming, you idiot. He said, how dare he do this to him? The God of Night aimed the shard at the boy's back. The shard smashed into Chu's back and blood gushed out. God said he was stupid and noisy and annoying. There was a huge snowdrift on the ground and the chains had broken out of it. The Sun Pilgrim was bound by energy chains and thought, what? In the snowdrift were Jai and Jiju, who used this technique. They climbed out of the snowdrift and let out cheers. The god began to climb higher and pull the guys with him. Zhu got off the ground, and Jai ran to the other side and said, please let him hold on for eight seconds. Zhu held on to his chains and replied that he understood everything. Let him hurry. Jai ran with all his might. The sun goddess said, Fine, he doesn't give up until the very end and is worthy of praise. She rolled over and ran after the guy. Jai ran and spoke to the boy in the yellow t-shirt. He said, Hey, Chubby, let him use the wind. The boy swung his sword, and at that moment, the system announced that there were ten seconds left. The boy in the yellow t-shirt was using the wind. The sun goddess held out her staff and said, 
basic skill, strong wind. Jai shouted that it was over. There were five seconds left and the guy was already at the target. But at that moment there was a goddess behind him who was aiming a large red fiery energy at him. Jai grinned and said that this is the end. With four seconds left, the god of night asked what? With three seconds left, Jai was already on target. Behind him, the large red fire energy of the sun goddess continued to accumulate. The pilgrim of darkness shouted that she had been tricked. Jai pushed off and jumped two seconds before the end. Zhu threw the sword to the guy and shouted, Catch! Everyone was near their energy funnels when the system reported that there was one second left and the boss was about to enter berserk mode. Jai shouted, Go! All the players started hitting the energy funnels. Next to them, the remnants of the god's energy appeared, green and red light. The system congratulates all players and informs them that they have successfully completed the round of god, which runs both day and night. The sky turned bright. Jai stood with his sword slung over his shoulder, and behind him was Jiju, who was sheathing his sword. The players looked at each other and asked, Did it work out? The system announces that they congratulate John Du and Jai Zhangfeng. She reports that they have completed the test of the god who walks both day and night and set a new record. The players cheered and hugged each other. They shouted and laughed. They were saying that they had finally leveled up and how good it was to be alive. The old man in the cap exhaled. A guy in a blue shirt held him by the shoulder and said his legs were shaking, but it was fine. The old man said he got it wrong. He needed to go to the bathroom. The guy with dark glasses opened his screen and said, Wow, what a cool thing. He asked her what she was doing. There was another player at the back who said that he had never had such a battle in his life. The guy in the gray tank top clenched his fists and said it was like a dream. He asked if they would be included in the table. The bald guy put his hands on his hips and said it wasn't likely to be them, probably the new guy. Jai fell to the ground and began to heal himself. The system congratulates player Jai Zhang Feng on receiving the hidden achievement, Wrath of the God of Night. The system reports that player Jai Zhang Feng has leveled up to 5. He has received 2 ice gems, 2 fire gems, and 300 experience points. He turned to the screen that appeared on the side and read that he had received a special reward, the level 40 Yushin Mask. The system reports that after applying the mask, it hides information about the player. Jai picked up the mask and thought, is this a special drop? He pondered, but why is the level so high? Jai turned to look at his sword and saw that it was shining. He thought, by the way, the equipment level in the god realm seems to be fixed, so what's so special about this sword? A guy with white hair approached Jai and said that it was a little late, but let him introduce himself. He said that his name is Yu Guan. He has been in the realm of the gods for three months now. Jai got up, held out his hand and said that he was very happy. He was Jai Zhang Feng, and he had been there for about three days. The guys shook hands, and the system showed their profiles. Jai Zhang Feng is a level 5 player, and Zhu Guan is a level 11 player. Zhu said that he had never seen a player level up so quickly before. He asked, he must have a rare class. Is he a reaper? Jai said he was. He thought, wait, how can they talk? Isn't that weird? Zhu asked, eh. Jai said, no, no. He doesn't have any talent or rare class, just luck. Zhu said it wasn't true. He said that although some classes have an innate advantage, it is only up to him how far he will advance and what abilities he will gain. Zhu put his hand on his shoulder and said that he had already succeeded enough, so there was no need to belittle himself. Jai said, okay, thanks. Zhu coughed and said, Ahem, forgive me for those moralizing speeches, it's a bad habit. He said it was hard being the big brother in a big family. Jai cupped his hands and said, Hey, hey, big brother, then let him take him along next time. Zhu said that it's better for a new player to play in a team, and if you don't need rewards... It's better not to keep them. He opened the screen and said that you can, for example, sell. But if you leave, you can quickly become a target for others. This is very dangerous. Zhu said so, so he shares the address of the merchant shop with him. He tapped on his screen and began transmitting coordinates. Jai gave a thumbs up and said, Thank you, he can come out now. Zhu said, By the way, there are 18 people left, but even with the day god's attack. He asked how he knew he could pass. 
Jai recalled the moment when Chu Yun was killed and said that after the God of Night killed Chu, the dot lit up. He said he thought the ice block had broken it. Jai said that they were only newbies after all, and Chu's level was high enough for a piece of ice to kill him so easily. He put his hands together, put on a cute face, and said, Thank you so much to those two gods for their help. Xu was confused and thought that he looked a little silly, but he was so attentive to the changes around him. Jai said, Thank you for your help. He will leave first. In the public chat line 9042 at 18, there was a message about a player passing Jun Du, completing a round and setting a new record. Title Sea Spirit, Yu and Huya asked. A new record? Did they manage so quickly? The first person at the hospital, Kadotaka, asked if there was an error in the system. Mizuno asked, Jun Du, isn't this the guy who has a low level and high rank on the list of saints? A serious guy sent a lot of six digits. In a place filled with bones and skulls, a man in a black jacket stood and watched something on the screen. Next to him, on a mountain of skulls, sat another guy in a black jacket. The man who was looking at the screen said that their record was broken. The difference is only a few seconds. A guy in a jacket and white shorts was doing somersaults and said, um, that's just a new player's record. The man said it looks like he's only been there recently. The guy who was sitting on the mountain of skulls said, Boss, he's hungry. He asked if there was anything. A girl wearing a black jacket with red elements and long white boots was standing on a giant skull surrounded by red shards. That girl was Boss Azrael. The system reported that the single-player crusade was successfully completed and rewards are being counted. The system announced that it was congratulating player Fudo Ming on completing the challenge obtained a hidden achievement that stands above millions of gods. Someone replied that he only had noodles. The public chat discussed getting the Fudoming achievement. Tomato Love Season wrote, Wow, do they see the creation of history? The eunuch wrote, It's Fudomi. A player with the nickname You Can't Go Crazy in the Morning wrote that he thinks the list of gods will be updated next week. He said, I wonder who will be overboard. My Chuanbao third wrote that the boss is amazing. In a big beautiful house by the lake, a guy was sitting on the couch and playing a game console. The man in the red jacket stared at him and said nothing. The guy won the game and threw back the joystick and said that it was easy. A guy with green hair, a fluffy fur coat with purple inserts and boots that look like buffoons asked, so what does he want from him? The man in the red jacket was Chu Yun. He shouted, as for the night god trial, the rules that he told him were useless. The guy put a finger to his chin and said, Wow, really? He said, Then maybe he just forgot something. The guy stamped his funny boots and started walking in the other direction. He said that, however, the challenges change depending on the player's actions. The green-haired guy asked, Didn't he understand this even though he was level 10? He turned around and said, Let him learn to think. The guy kept walking away and saying, Okay, he's tired of sitting there, so tell him to say hi to daddy. The veins on Chu Yun's hands swelled up and he asked, Is he a first class player? He said that someday he would crush it. Chu clenched his fist and said that even that brat, he would destroy everything he had. By a tall tree, at a long table, sat the sun goddess, the god of night, and across from him sat a guy with green hair. The girl stretched out her arms and said that she was so tired, it had been a long time since there was such a capable beginner. The god of night clutched a small mug and remained silent. A guy with green hair was building a pyramid out of different shapes. He looked at the god of darkness and asked, Oh, is he still angry? The guy said that he was very vain. This test was very interesting. The god of night broke the mug and said that this Jai Zying Feng dared to tease him in front of so many mortals. The green-haired guy asked, But isn't that a good thing? He said that after all, the goal of the god realm is to select the best. The guy pushed back from the table and said that the two of them had raised the bar pretty well together. The sun goddess said exactly that. She slammed her fists on the table and said that this Zhu Guan also deserves attention. He has such an aura that it makes her feel uneasy. The god of night made one vicious sound. The goddess folded her hands under her chest and said, How god is he so pathetic, angry over some small thing? She put her hand to her bare stomach and said that she should be angry. He stabbed her, even though it didn't kill her, but it still hurt. The green-haired guy said it was his special skill. He said, 
but even if it's a god's relic, it's still within the skill range. A purple portal appeared from the side, and a black-robed head peeked out. The unknown person asked why they didn't invite him to such an important event. The gods thought that. They rose from their seats, clasped their hands, and lowered their heads. The gods asked him what he was doing there. The unknown man in the snake-scale robe completely walked out of the portal and remained silent. The green-haired guy said, Ah, he came to see how it went. The robed man pulled his hand out of his pocket and pointed. He saw fragments of Jai Zhang Fang's battle in the dungeon. The man said, I see. Interesting. Very interesting. He said that it was a god relic that he had also never seen before. The green-haired guy said that even though they were companions now, he didn't like being spied on like this. The robed guy said it was understandable, but they didn't warn him that Shen Gongbao was following an interesting newcomer. The green-haired guy frowned. The robed man said though. He thinks he's watching the relic more. Maybe he's wrong. The green-haired guy folded his arms and said, Who knows, but if the relic suddenly returned to its place, then he could decide for himself what to do with Jai Zhang Feng. He asked, right? The robed man said yes, then he can do whatever you want with it. On a city street in the middle of high-rises, Jai was walking with a tall, bald guy he was fixing a bracelet for. The bald guy asked what? Is he the rookie who set a new record yesterday? Jai carried an ice cream cone in his hands, put his finger to his lips and said, Let him keep his voice down. The bald guy said, Well done. He thought he was just a pebble, but he turns out to be a treasure. He said, I guess all the guilds want to invite him, right? Jai said that he didn't want to join anything. He wanted to work like that one. The bald guy patted his head and said, Hey, no one wanted to invite him. He said yes, and he's just collecting low and mid-level content to sell to people he knows. The guy said that he had to explore that world to find his father. Jai said, Yeah, so those notes about the wrong path that he made. He made a gesture with his hand. Okay. The bald guy smiled and said, All right, he'll send him the correct copy. But they'll stop there. They were standing at a traffic light when the bald guy said that the ID in the game is anonymous, but the player records are constantly updated. He said that anyone could come to him, friend or foe, so he should be careful. Jai said yes, he would be on the lookout. The traffic light turned green and the bald guy walked across the road. He said, well he went, see you later. Jai waved at him and said, yeah, see you later. On the roof of the high rise was a man who was watching Jai's journey home. Jai walked home, ate ice cream, and went to the alley. The person standing on the roof was a man. He said he was just as stupid as his father. Jai finished his ice cream and continued walking down the street. He turned around and asked, huh? He looked around and asked, hmm, was it my imagination? Jai continued on his way and said that he needed to calm down, otherwise no nerves would be enough. Three men in red, green, and blue masks were standing around the corner. The guy in the red mask said it was close, almost spooked. The green masked man opened the screen and started searching for something. The guy in the red mask asked, Hey, is he sure it's that guy? The man replied that he thought yes. His appearance was very similar to what Chu Xiao described. The green masked man said, It's a good thing he didn't hide all the information. Otherwise, it would be hard to find him. The masked guy's back was touched with a finger and said, Um. They turned and saw Jai. Jai asked, Are they looking for him by chance? The masked men screamed and started to run, but they fell down. They said, since he found out, let him give up all the items he has, and they will spare his life. Jai asked, Chu Xiao? He said it was Chu Yun who sent them there. The masked guys jumped up, swung their swords, and said that he was talking too much. Jai swung his sword and tried to hold off the attack. He thought, this is the power. They look like suffocated, but they are far from weak. The man in the green mask said, let him give up. He can't beat them. Jai thought, this chubby guy is too fast. He wondered where he was. The man in the green mask said, Oh, young man, you can't judge a book by its cover. Stealth is an amazing skill. The boys turned around and asked who it was. At the end of the passageway, there was a person radiating purple energy. It turned out to be a man with long hair in a blue kimono and a cat on his shoulder who was watching the guy on the way home.